If you give your hair like this, it works. Hey, we all in a project just like the good old days. If you haven't seen the video, Brayden Price gave me one of his pit bikes. Why is it my bike? <laughs> You're getting it, I don't want it. Why not? I want to give it to you. Why is that? Because that's what I want to do. There's still a part of me that kind of doesn't believe it, but it's in Florida, it's no longer in North Carolina, and yeah, I get to ride it, so it definitely did happen. It has some issues though. What's going on is A, it's smoking, and B, it doesn't want to start, and it doesn't want to run without the choke on. So there's carburetor issues, maybe some uh, piston ring issues, maybe some valve issues. I don't know exactly or, or how bad some certain things are, but I do want to check it out, and that's what we're doing on today's vlog. This thing sits really low. Maybe we can get a big boy stand and put it on that and hopefully raise it up. Something like this. That works way better than I thought it was going to. Now that it's sitting on a decent stand here, I'm gonna take off all these plastics. The carburetor is right here. The valves and stuff are right here. We're working on the front portion here, so we may as well get everything out of our way. Let's tear the sucker apart. Just like that, we're down to the carburetor, and then we're down to checking our valves here. It looks like there's two sight holes here, so I can check the valve clearances there. The carburetor manages the fuel, right? You have your gas tank that holds the fuel and holds the supply, and this thing distributes it to the engine, which gives this thing the right amount of fire, right amount of oxygen, stuff like that. So uh, right now, yeah, we as long as we have a clean air filter, we're getting plenty of air. but. Something, I'm sure the jets are clogged. Not only do we have to take it off to clean it, but we also, if, if we take it off, we're gonna be able to see our valves a heck of a lot easier. This is where the carburetor went. Now this, this is where I should be able to see some valve clearances. I'm not sure, I've never tinkered with one of these little guys, but that's what I'm gonna assume. Assume and does some bad things sometimes though. It's like my old KX went into a shrink machine and I got this. Drain pan to the rescue! Yeah! Come on Dalton, can't have nothing nice. I mean, come on, we did start out with a steamy pile of I mean, Brayden, thank you very much, buddy. Uh, check this out. I'm gonna take the kickstand here, or the kickstarter, my apologies. Watch this valve. And you can see it moves. And that's what's in control of how much air and exhaust leave your engine. Well, they have to be at a certain spec, otherwise they're not efficient. So, we're gonna check these guys' clearances out. Thinking maybe this will give me access to some sort of nut. Maybe I can crank the engine over. Jackpot! It's so humid out that, like, literally, we just start to drip in wetness it's not even like completely sweat i mean there's it, it can it can be a little gross i gotta find the specs to the valves on this i think it's a 2012 uh, klx 110 siri find klx valve clearances the cat down the road said we gotta take this thing off to find tdc also this black cap here uh there's there's like two or three things that have to line up to find TDC. Once we find that, I guess the clearances are two and four or five thousandths, one or, the other, one or the other. If you have a 2012 or if you know any specs, leave them in the comment section below. I'm not sure if those specs are right, but once I get a, a tool in there to kind of see what's going on, I'm sure I'll be able to tell if that's semi-correct or just way off. These valves really shouldn't be in too 
it shouldn't be too far off. It already runs and it starts up. I think it's just a fuel issue. Supposedly this nut in here is a 17. Yes it is. But Kawasaki, why did you do such a silly thing as to not put this nut at a 17? Just make them both the same size. Now I gotta go up, get a different wrench. Very inconvenient. Check this out. You won't cringe at all. Look at all my all my nice tools that are supposed to be, and these aren't even like cheap tools either. But I mean, just completely rusted over. Not good at all. Oh, great! The feeler gauge is even sweet because that doesn't screw up the the clearances at all. <sighs> Can't have nothing nice. See, I asked the county to if I can fix my roof, and they tell me no. Now, how silly is that? I can't even fix my own freaking roof. Crazy. It's because the house on the property is shot. So the fact that your primary residence is no good doesn't allow you to fix anything else on the property. Such a silly, silly concept. If you ever, if, if I ever have a government of any kind, if you ever want to improve anything on your property, I'm gonna go ahead and give you the green flag as long as you, you know, are using the right supplies and you're not gonna kill yourself. What do you think? Leave it in the comment section below. Do you agree with that? Or should we just allow, you know, things to just continue to get damaged? And just like you'd like every situation, these check right out. The smallest one I have is a .003. Now, I'm supposed to be able to fit a .02 in there, but luckily the .03 won't go in there, which means we're on perfect spec. And then down here, the .04 uh, just slides in with some drag. So we're at textbook spec. I didn't think we were going to have an issue, but now I know that we're in perfect spec, and now that knowing, that's always a clutch. So before we tear anything else apart, we'll seal this up so no dirt or grime or anything bad gets in this thing. Grime is not a good time. See what I did there? Dalton, you're really going to have to cut out the rhyming thing, otherwise I'm unsubscribing. And we're going to tighten these down to exactly there. Pop quiz, does the dry one go on top or bottom? What I mean is this one's got oil in it, this one doesn't have oil in it. If you paid attention, dry one goes on top. Oil was spewing out the bottom. Better not have failed the pop quiz. I freaking hated pop quizzes. This is kind of a goofy airbox setup. There's a big zip tie here. Is that supposed to be there? Oh, you know what? That is a that's a decent design. Now what? Kinda. Oh, look at that. Oh yeah, Kawasaki. I kinda dig that. I like that. Brand new! Brand new! That is pretty crafty. I will put a bag of M&Ms on the line right now saying that this was definitely a Friday decision. Okay, Thursday came along and they were working on something else. Friday came along and the engineers are like, well, how can we put the air filter box on here? And they're like, well, you know, I really want to get under my boat or I really want to, you know, spend time with my family. What if you use a zip tie? That's exactly what happened. I guarantee it. Supposedly the worst vehicles, the lemons, usually have been built on Fridays or Mondays. I think that's the statistic. What's really going on with this thing? Ow. bright beautiful Florida Sun over there and I currently can't see you guys I look directly into it but I was looking directly into it because I'm trying to see if I can see light through this jet and this one I can't I literally can't see anything right now so John came by and now it's dark but I managed to bore this jet out I took my small little bit set I have I have two of these kits I uh, took the one and I put put it on a, a tool I have that actually hangs on to these tiny drill bits these are drill bits and I drilled this out. Uh, not only did I clean it out where I can see light, but then I, I went to where the bit wouldn't go in anymore and then went up a size. So now we're getting more fuel. Hopefully, more fuel means more bang. More bang means more push, which means more power in between my crotch. Just so you can see it, this is the assembly I got on here. This is the thing that hangs onto it and then you can see that there is a drill bit. So yeah, I did drill this completely out. It took about 45 seconds. But that, you'd be surprised how those things just eat right through here. Man, I look grimy. 
Uh, I'm gonna leave a link to the micro box drill bits in the in the description. Also, if you guys ever want to shop on eBay or Amazon, I'd appreciate it if you use the links in my description. They help me out, and they don't cost you any more. And that tiny percentage helps us get a little bit more Braptastic every day. Before I go ahead and make this thing real comfy, I'm gonna go ahead and check it out now that the carb is on and that the gas tank is on. I think the goods will fit somewhere in this nice pocket. Let's try it. This is the old gas. I thought I'd find some water slugs. That's what my buddy Dave calls them. But I don't see any water in this thing. Hopefully it's just bad gas. Oh, I gotta tighten that up. Thought I tightened it. Hair like this, it works. Idle's even decent. Look at that. Let's put it back together and rip it. It's finally track ready, baby. Thank you, Brayden. Brayden's link to his channel will be in the description. He deserves it. Make sure you go check him out. Thank you, Brayden, very much. I hope you guys enjoyed this 3D Machines production. Until next time, stay breathtastic.